So I think everybody here is me. Thank you for coming and watching our presentation. Now I am pushing my uh, digital watch. Okay. Now, uh, unfortunately, my wife Shane Gulading, which is the leader of the excavation, is not here. So now, as uh, Sazanga said, uh, so we have to find another doctor Riding, which is me. Okay. So uh, uh, our excavation is quite interesting for us at least because it is the first excavation which is not a salvage excavation inside Istanbul big boundaries. And we are talking about a place a place 20 kilometers uh, west of uh, Bosphorus. Uh, people are saying that there is nobody in Istanbul left, but uh, anyway, with a couple of seasons we provided that it's not the case. So this is Küçükçekmece Lake, one of these two uh, typical lakes there, uh, which is which is near uh, north of the uh, Marmara Sea. And in two areas, we call it areas 8 and area 24, we are, I think we are able to follow the cursor. Yeah, this is area 8 and area 24. We carried out a couple of seasons of excavations. Okay, in this excavation we found more than 50,000 uh, ceramic pieces, 20,000 glasses and uh, many thousands of uh, iron and metal parts. But a couple of, uh, of these findings are quite su surprising. Now, in the left uh, and cor upper corner, this is tin inside a typical mid-second millennium BC Anatolian ceramic. And this is the same ceramic, a little bit uh, together. And there are two statuettes, typical early heated types, and one is them, this uh, goddess, we call it goddess, is uh, almost 100% iron. And the other one is 70% iron and 30% tin. And also we have a single piece of this uh, white slip to separate uh, ceramics. Some Mycenaean, two pieces of Mycenaean, we cannot tell exact the date, but from the context we can say everything is uh, within this uh, 16th to 14th century BC. And a small handle from the uh, west of Bulgaria. And the last but not the least, uh, this lead figurine, probably a goddess mounted on a deer. So let me talk about a little bit our excavation. Uh, so for a couple of years, we just uh, went with a very good, I would say, uh, financing, which was stopped now, uh, unfortunately. But anyway, what we did, first we started with a abstinence building, which was uh, destroyed in 6th century AD, and when it was destroyed, it was a, one of the quite big churches. This is the uh, Absido building we started, and uh, this is the final form after a couple of years. So the ground level was uh, about 12 and a half meter above the sea level, and uh, the lowest level we, we just came was 9.6 meter above the sea level. The surprise was that in this uh, upside, so we encountered first this goddess, this iron goddess. It was quite corrupted, but uh, we made analysis and uh, XRF uh, fluorescence techniques, and uh, we found that this is the most we can renovate it uh, because it, it could collapse any time. And what, uh, what we are showing here with red line. This is, uh, in this trench, there was uh, about 30 centimeters of sea sediment with lots of mollusk uh, sea, uh, sea creatures and sea sand. And below that, there was coming lots of architecture and other findings. When we go deeper than the sea sediment, uh, something came out like that, and a couple of days later, it was cleared. And it was a stone not building, but some kind of uh, storage area with 70 to 100 centimeter inside the diameter. And here, which you see here, there was this. It is thin. But uh, as we, we know that in very wet conditions, powder tin can become very kind of cream, creamy stuff. And it was this. And you see the same storage area from a diff different point of view. 
And this, in this drawing, uh, the number one shows where we, we encountered the goddess, and this two where we can we find the tin. And this is XRF, and it says 99.5 uh, tin, and the rest a very small percentage of uh, iron. Okay, now after a couple of weeks of excavation, what we discovered about the absidal building, there was lots of other findings. And, uh, and as you see, this goddess we already introduced you. Here is, we have this uh, tin. But also, one single piece of this Cypriot uh, shirt come right here. There are other typical Anatolian type of mid uh, second millennium BC, Anatolian type of uh, ceramics here, here, and, and uh, just a couple of meters to the uh, uh, east west, southwest of this upside, within the same building. We have other type of Anatolian red stuff and this Mycenaean pieces and this Bulgarian handle. When we go further 40, 40 meters from the upside, when we go there to another trench, so we encountered another uh, small Hittite type statue. This is a god. 70% iron and the rest is 30% tin, as I said. And also, we had another uh, excavation area, as I told you. This is number eight. And in this number eight area, we were excavating first and regularly a huge early Byzantine or late Roman palace complex, probably the, uh, belonging to Constantine and his sons. But of course, in Turkey, as you know, the Turkey, uh, some real amateur excavators work much harder than the professional ones. And here, sorry, uh, in a couple of places, there was some very deep trenches made by these robbers. And from these trenches, we were able to little bit look at the very past because the regular excavation was going to the Roman times, or we were just about to touch anything times, but from these small uh, excavated places, we were able to collect this uh, second millennium uh, ceramics and, and other stuff. Well, in this picture also, we, there, there was another thing. This is a lead uh, figurine, uh, again from the Hittite times. As I told you, so we, we, we tried to make some charcoal analysis, C414 analysis, and the surprise was that uh, they gave 6,000 BC, millennium, 6 millennium BC. And there uh, are some uh, calculated to early Bronze Age uh, shards also is coming this, in the same area. Anyway, uh, yes, Anatolian type picture, what we found. Also, again, the same, uh, I'm showing the same uh, Cypriot stuff and other red Anatolian type of ceramics. What we counted was there was 14 distinct vessels. And uh, as you, you may see from here, they were the copy, copies of this metallic vessel, which was quite common in the early parts of uh, second millennium BC. So metallic, very expensive, and there are copies in the ceramics. Also, I, uh, in this trench, there was this gut, small figuring of gut, but in the same trench, there was another thing which was not so abnormal in, uh, in a place which is, has a big harbor. This is, a, this is uh, some bitumens from Mesopotamia, probably, most probably from Mesopotamia. But it shows that what we are digging was an uh, international harbor. Just to remind you that we have two different uh, excavation area. This is eight, and in the eight, so we found this uh, goddess mounted on a deer. And the analysis shows that 70 percent is uh, lead and other things. Yeah. The status point of view, this is some, uh, something that uh, is very common in Hittite time. As you see, lots of god and goddesses just mounted on deer. And they are the, in Hittite uh, known as De Lamma, protective god of goddesses. There were other things, 
we found just small pieces and a small weight. Uh, this type of animal uh, type of weight was common in uh, Egyptian also. Well, the conclusion is as I said, but the question, how this material could have come here? From uh, Ulubrun shipwreck, we know that there was a huge uh, trade connections and commerce in all say, Eastern uh, Mediterranean. And people were thinking that uh, the ships were going up and down from Bosphorus, which was very tri tricky. And because we have to think that Ulubrun ship was, this is the replica of Ulubrun ship, and this is the plan of it. You know, there is no rover. These are not proper road, they are just steering. With such a ship, if you put 20 tons of a typical uh, late Bronze Age load, you cannot go to north from Bosphorus. You cannot go neither from the Dardanelles, which is slightly easier than Bosphorus. People tried this. There is an organization which made, which made the replica. They cannot sail up with a good wind up to uh, Dardanelles, and they never tried to Bosphorus. But what can be done was this type of ships with hundreds or 170 rowers, just in a typical trirem. Of course, with, uh, with such a ship, you can go up. But these ships cannot carry any sizable trade goods. So, this is uh, also my uh, PhD thesis. The, the, uh, the commercial people doesn't care about sending ships to this place or that place. They are what they care. They care to send their goods safely, cheaply, and quickly from A to B. So this is proposed by myself, that the ships were coming from agency, going to the narrow, this is Isthmus of Gedebolu Peninsula, and another ship was carrying to Batonea, our excavation site, and small land route going to the only natural harbor in Black Sea area, and it was just distributed. So this is a detailed version of the same thing. Uh, thank you very much. So I think I was a little bit fast and cut short my presentation.